Hello guys and welcome to another episode of my lecture. This is Ola Yeni, Dear Colola Daniels, popularly known as Dear Core Spectre. And welcome to another episode of Dear Core Talks Law. On today's episode, we will be discussing Maxim 5. Maxim 5, which says that he who seeks equity must do equity. In my previous lecture, I have discussed Maxim 1, equity will not suffer a wrong without a remedy. Maxim 2, equity follows the law. Maxim 3, where the equities are equal, the law shall prevail. Maxim 4, where they are equal equities, the first in time shall prevail. And this is Maxim 5, which is he who seeks equity equity must do equity if you have not watched any of the four previous maxims i would advise you to do so before you watch this one and if this is your first time of coming to my channel please make sure that you click the subscribe button and most importantly make sure that you click the notification bell so that anytime i release a video of this nature you are going to be one of the first set of people to watch that particular video also please make sure to follow me on linkedin at dear colola daniels moving on to our class for today like i said we will be discussing he who seeks equity must do equity so let's go straight into the notes this means equity in its proper sense of what is right and fair a plaintiff who wishes to obtain an equitable relief or remedy must be prepared to do what is just and fair towards the person against whom is seeking such a relief or remedy otherwise equity will not come to his head that is basically when you are going to court to say my lord please i need equity from the court for my lord to do that for you then you must also show that you are ready to do equity do you understand that you must be willing to do equity where you come to the court to ask for equity let us look at the case of brown versus ade banjo in 1986 case nwlr part 3 a 3 a trespass had been committed by the defendant against the plaintiff's land whereupon it was agreed that the vendors of the defendant would give the plaintiff another land as suitable as the one trespassed on by the defendant because the plaintiff had built on the part of the land the defendant's vendor changed their mind and suggested that the defendant should compensate the plaintiff monetarily, which was agreeable by the plaintiff. Now, before we go into the High Court judgment and subsequently the Court of Appeal judgment, I need you to understand what is going on here. Now, we have A and we have B. A has a land. Now, B did not know that he was encroaching on A's land when he was building his own land. Do you understand? So their lands are adjacent to each other. Like, you know, you know when you go to the village, there's always a tree. If you followed your father or you stay somewhere close, you know, to the village, they usually have a marker, like the form of a tree. Oh, from this tree here to this tree there, that is where your land end. This part is my land. But I don't think in this case there was that kind of marker. So the defendant here who admitted that they have encroached, you know, encroached on, you know, the plaintiff's land, you know, because they did not know. I want to believe they did not know. So they built on certain part of the plaintiff's land. So initially they said, you know what, now that we have done this, let us give you another land that is as suitable as this one, you know, which, which makes sense. I mean, a land for a land, right? However, when the defendants now realized that the plaintiff had already built on certain part of the land, then they said, hold up, hold up, wait, wait. You have built on certain part of the land, which means that it becomes not too useful for us anymore. Sure, you get because this is what we intended to do 
and now that you have built on this part we can no longer do out our plan and it's going to be to our detriment where this land is useless because you built on certain parts i will not give you another full land uh -uh, no no something is wrong so they said you know what we are going to give you money instead instead of giving you another land let us give you money and then the plaintiff said no problem and then you know we are going to collect your money thank you very much now but the defendant never gave the plaintiff the money neither did the defendant give land to the plaintiff then they got to the court what did the high court say that's the trial court the trial court dismissed the action of the plaintiff on the ground that having elected to settle the matter by agreement he was stopped from suing the defendant the trial court raised suomoto the equitable doctrine of representation and estopel by election now i don't expect that you will understand what this is so i will try to explain the parts for you now the trial court dismissed the action that means that they said oga plaintiff you did not win this case why did the trial court dismiss the action because according to the trial court where the plaintiff has elected to settle the matter out of court by an agreement he can no longer come to the courts do you understand that you agreed with the defendant that you are not going to go to court because there is an agreement do you understand so where there is an agreement you cannot now say oh you want to go around that agreement and go to court you look at what the trial court said the trial court raised so moto so moto means that the parties before the court did not raise the issue there are certain times even though the court is not supposed to delve into the arena the court is supposed to be an unbiased umpire listening to both parties argument and giving judgment based on both parties arguments however according to the rules of court certain times the court can raise an issue where it is very important for that issue to be addressed so the court raised this issue so moto on the doctrine of representation and estopel by election where somebody has elected not to go to court and has elected to agree to certain things that person would be estopped that's what estopel is that person will be estopped by the court from you know bringing the action subsequently because he has represented which is also the doctrine of representation he has represented to the other party that he is not going to go to court therefore by virtue of the doctrine of representation that oh guy i'm not going to court and by virtue of the doctrine of estopel that says when there is an agreement otherwise you can no longer bring the matter to the court the trial court dismissed the action and said plaintiff go to do your agreement that is what you've elected to do do you understand that but then when they got to the court of appeal the court of appeal had a different opinion the court of appeal held inter alia inter alia means amongst other thing that a party who seeks equity must do what equity now kolawole justice of the court of appeal held that there is no where in the proceeding of record where the defendant in order to show his good faith made any specific offer of monetary compensation for the encroachment upon the plaintiff's land which the defendant himself admitted to yet he went on with his construction not caring whether the negotiation broke down or not if the defendant wanted equity from the court he himself ought to have displayed some equity can you see that now what they are saying is you can remember that in the trial courts it was the doctrine of equitable representation and the doctrine of estopel by election those two doctrines are under equity now the courts that is Kola Wale, justice of the court of appeal is saying that you cannot come to the courts and collect equity when you yourself are not willing to do equity you know you encroached on this person's land you know you agree that you are going to pay have you paid no you agree that you are going to give him another land have you given him another land no have you done anything on your part 
to show that you have acted in good faith and you have acted with good conscience have you no if you haven't you cannot come to the court to seek equity do you understand that if you have not done equity on your own part you cannot come to the court to seek equity and that was what Kola Wale JCA held in the uh, uh, case of Brown versus Adibanjo and he expressly overruled the trial court and held that yes the other party can come to court since you know the trial court blocked them from coming to court because of the agreement but Kola Wale is saying that for that agreement to hold and for the doctrine of equitable representation and all that to hold the other party too must have done equity under the agreement the other party hasn't done any equity therefore he is not entitled to equity if you have not in in actual fact given him the land paid him money or done something then you are not you know supposed to be giving anything in relation to equity now to continue with the notes the maxim can be illustrated in three ways that means he who seeks equity must do equity it can be illustrated in three ways number one is the doctrine of election number two is the consolidation of mortgage and number three is illegal loans now let's go to number one the doctrine of election the rationale of the doctrine of election is that nobody shall be allowed to claim a benefit under a document but repudiate the obligation imposed by the same document for example if a gives a property to b in the same instrument or document also purports to give b's property to c b will not be able to claim the whole of the gift unless he allows the gift to see to take effect this is this is very easy i just want you to understand you know how this uh, uh he who seeks equity must do equity work let's say we have tinumbu we have osibajo and we have buari now you know tinumbu here you know in writing his will said that ah osibajo i am going to give you oriental hotel everything about oriental hotel which belongs to tinumbu and tvc too everything about oriental hotel and tvc i will give to you osibaju but you osibaju for you to be able to get those things you must give your property in banana island to buhari if you don't now according to the doctrine of election for osibaju to be able to get oriental hotels and tvc he must give his property at banana island to buhari he cannot get those things and not fulfill the obligation so he who seeks equity by collecting uh, the oriental hotel and also collecting uh, the tvc must do equity by giving his banana island property to buhari do you understand that that is what doctrine of election also you can look at the case of taylor versus williams in 1935 case 12 nigerian law report page 67 so let's go to number two and number two is what consolidation of mortgage this is the right of a person in whom two or more mortgages are vested to refuse to allow one mortgage to be redeemed unless the other is also redeemed this may be illustrated from this hypothetical illustration x made two loans of two million naira to y the first loan being secured by a mortgage of black acre worth three million and the second loan by a mortgage of white acre also worth three million naira if the value of black acre decreased subsequently to one million naira whilst white acre increased to five million naira it will be unfair to allow Y to redeem white acre and leave black acre unredeemed equity will thus allow x to consolidate and will not permit y to redeem white acre unless he is prepared to redeem black acre now this is simple english now we are saying that y has two lands what are the two lands white acre black acre the both of them are worth how much three million three million perfect fantabulous now y went to x and said x take black acre give me two million is worth three million so in any case you can sell it and recover your money 
He said, okay, no problem. He went to X again and said, X, ah, that two million that you gave me, something happened. Give me another two million. I would uh, give you my white acre. It's also worth how much? Three million. Very good. Fantabulous. So, in total, X has two lands that you know is mortgaged from where that is white acre and black acre both were three three million which is going to give him six million why why as four million that is supposed to be for x and all that now after like five years because the loan was for five years after like five years we now realize that black acre decreased to one million something happened maybe they discovered pipeline there you know or something maybe there are cultists around the area you know that there, there are certain influences that can diminish the the value of a land if you discover pipeline on the land everybody want to run away from that land because anything can happen at any point you know so they they, they want to run away from the land and all that and all that so that would decrease it or maybe there are a lot of gunmen attacks and the place is very rough it automatically because everybody nobody wants to stay in a place that is you know so one way or the other black acre decreased in value to one million naira. however white acre increased in value to five million era as a businessman why we look at the both of them and say eh there's pipeline on this land wow nobody's going to buy it again oh thank god see i don't mortgage them ma give them ma, ma just dash them to x nobody's going to buy this one or ah every day gunmen attacks jesus i no do i no do again so he then abandons you know a uh, black acre that has a lot of that then white acre increased in value are you listening? Why Keka increased in value to five million? He said, Yes, fantabulous. Then he went to X and said, X, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your two million, give me the deeds to my white taker. And then X said, What about black Keka? <laughs> no worry, I don't dash you. <laughs> I don't do. And you know that X is going to be running at a loss. Do you understand that? X will be running at a loss because Black Acre is no longer as it used to. It's no longer 3 million. It's now 1 million in value. Equity will allow X to consolidate both mortgages. I will not permit Y to redeem White Acre unless he's prepared to redeem Black Acre. So can you see how that works? For you to seek equity, you must do equity. Equity will allow X to consolidate both of the mortgages into one. If you know you want your white acre back, then you must be prepared to redeem what black acre. So let us go to the third and final one, which is the illegal loans. The application of this maxim to illegal funds is exemplified by the case of Lodge versus National Union Investment Company. In this case, X borrowed money from Y, a money lender, and mortgaged certain securities to him. The contract was illegal and void since the money lender was not registered under the English Money Lenders Act of 1900. Then X sued Y to recover the securities. So for you to understand and let me explain the fact now x borrowed money from y let us say x borrowed 10 million and then x gave him his properties uh yeah take my car take my house take my this take my that do you understand that so all of a sudden x found out that that contract is illegal because y had not registered his business under the english money lenders act of 1900 where the business is not registered the business is illegal and according to contract law the law will not enforce an illegal contract you should have learned that in your contract law if you have done it the law will not enforce an illegal contract so therefore they will push you out and say oh, yeah, yeah yeah my guy out of this court this is an illegal contract there was this very funny case that i read at one point where arm robbers went to rob and they got certain proceeds and one party now went to court admitted that they robbed and then was asking for his own share according to the agreement i was like are you that dumb <laughs> like are you are you so daft that you don't know that you just admitted to a crime in open is your lawyer that did he go to law school <laughs> 
because at the end of the day, I think, you know, I think that they were arrested on the spot or something like that because it made no sense. You went to testify in court that, oh, you robbed the bank or you robbed whatever it is that you robbed. And, you know, there was an agreement. My Lord, I would like you to enforce that agreement. <laughs> Oh, my lord said, you know, this is an illegal contract and I will not enforce an illegal contract. So according to this as well, the contract is legal and therefore void. And you know what X then did? X then said, oh yeah, why? Our contract is illegal. Although you gave me 10 million, no, but since it's illegal, you don't feel collect them back. Oh yeah, give my car, give my house, give my everything. And then, you know, why was like, ah, uh ah. -uh. So stupid me. Are you is everything all right upstairs? Why would I give you all these things? Where is my own 10 million? Do you think that you know you are so smart that I will just and then X was like, I have lawyer, I will go to court, I will see you in court. You know all those things that big men used to do. I will see you in court and all that. Then Y said, We will see in court. And then they got to court, and then the court held that yes, this is an illegal contract. However, for there to be an order for delivering up of the things in wise possession, which include X's car, X's houses, then X will be prepared to do equity by repaying the amount of the loan. And I think that that is just fair. The contract is illegal, yes. According to the common law, the law is harsh, the law is rigid. On a normal day, they are supposed to throw Y out of the court and say, Why, you say, Why go or do illegal, whatever. But according to good conscience, regardless of the fact that Y, you know, did whatever is illegal, I think they should still be able to enforce that contract. Do you know why they should be able to enforce the contract? Now, they should give X his money back. However, the interest, forget it. Give him if he's 10 million naira, he gave you to pay 20. That's 20 million. Give him back his 10 million naira. But let why forget his interest. That is only fair and only just. In the case of the arm robbery, whatever, there was no way that equity was going to even help you know the other party. That is the party that was asking for a share of the proceeds. Because he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. Don't worry, I'll discuss that in my next maxim. You know, this one is he who seeks equity must do equity. So, this one, you know, I will give you a, you know, difference between this and that in, you know, the next, uh, the next lecture. But I hope you understand this case of Lodge versus National Union Investment Company. So the man here is saying that he wants his property back without having to pay back the loan. And the court held that, no, you must pay back that loan. However, you don't need to pay the interest, but you must give him his money back. In the event that you don't want to give him his money back, then he too, he will hold your property because he who wants equity from the court must be prepared to do equity if you want equity of your property back you should be prepared to do equity by giving him his money back that's what the court held in lodge versus national union investment company and then we go to the next and the last case for our class for today and this case is a very interesting case because the judges just totally ignored you know the case of lodge versus national union investment they totally ignored it and that's the case of kasumu versus babaybe it was decided by the western africa court of appeal and also by the privy council and the both of them decided to decline not to follow lodge's case and then when I was reading the judgment, I was like, fantabulous, wonderful. Now, what happened? The fact were that the plaintiff mortgage leasehold land to the defendant, a licensed money lender, as opposed to Lodge's case where he wasn't licensed. In this case, he was licensed. Now, the money lender had kept no book recording the transaction as required by section 19 of the money lenders act. That's where he had the problem. And the agreement was therefore unenforceable under that section. The plaintiff instituted proceeding, claiming possession of the property, cancellation of the mortgage, 
knowledge and delivering of the title deeds. Now, according to what we've learned from Lodge's case, yes, you can ask for your property back and cancellation of the mortgage because it's not enforceable, void, and illegal. However, if you are coming to court to ask for equity, you must be willing to do equity according to what Lodge's case has said. However, the court here. Mm -mm. The court said that yes, he can recover. He said that the principle in Lodge's case was not applicable to a transaction declared unenforceable by Section 19 of the Money Lenders Act. The Act, in stating that no loan which failed to satisfy the statutory requirement was to be enforced, meant that no court of law was to recognize the lender as having any right to recover his money, to impose terms of repayment as a condition for making the order sought by the plaintiff would be in direct conflict with the policy of the act. I read this judgment and I was like, my lord, my lord, even the fact that this is a judgment of the Privy Council, the highest court in England, I seem very appalled because it seems to me that my lord do not understand how equity works. Isn't equity, the purpose of equity, to make sure that where the law seems too harsh or too rigid, it's supposed to smoothen it. It's supposed to come with fairness and good conscience and justice. Making sure that both parties are compensated duly and one party is not unduly compensated to the detriment of the other. Is that not the essence of equity? So, when my lord made this decision, I went back to what Coyote JSC, Coyote Eshaw, JSC said in the Trans Bridge case, where we talked about equity follows the law, where he said that equity is not to be a water to be poured on the fire of the law, neither is equity to be used to threaten the law. Equity is supposed to complement the law. Equity cannot operate in vacuum unless where the law has been invoked and is inadequate. In this case, the law has made a contract unenforceable. Wouldn't that then mean that a party here is going to have double portion? while the other party is going to have zero isn't that what equity tries to fight against does it equity as a maxim lean against double portion where one party has two things and the other party has zero in this case the party here has his mortgage cancelled has the delivery of his possession back to him and yet still has the money that he collected isn't that against what equity stands for why then will you ignore the, the, the judgment in large case and decide to declare this? Why? It doesn't make any sense. But that is the reason why we are law students. We are law students so that when we read judgment of courts, we can reason was this judgment right or was this judgment wrong? Could this judgment have been better or is this judgment a perfect one? At I seem not to follow what the Privy Council has held in the case of Kasumu versus Babagbe because I feel that it totally ignored Lodge's case and more importantly ignored the rules of equity. I seem to follow Lodge's case because Lodge's case goes with rationale, goes with reason, which is the essence of equity itself where you should have good conscience and all that. So with that, I would like to know what you think on this particular matter in the comment section below. Below. Do you think that Kasumu's case was better judged than that of uh, uh, Lodge's case? Do you think that there should be some form of differentiation between the both of them? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. But for now, thank you so much for watching to the end of this lecture. Make sure that you subscribe, like, and share this lecture video with your friends. Our next lecture will be he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. Please also make sure that you follow me on LinkedIn at Dear Colola Daniels. I will see you in my next class. Have a wonderful day.